Hey everybody, it's the Photog Adventures. We're talking about our photo contest tonight. I'm Aaron King. I'm Brennan Porter. Daniel Linhart. And Rusty Parkhurst. Yeah. So we're joined by these guys helping us judge the photo contest. We recently had a photo contest where we challenged people to find something close to home that they like. Astrophotography or night photography. It could be either or. And it had to be within 30 minutes of their house. And so we had a lot of entrants. We had narrowed those entrants down to four contestants and four winners. Well, four winners. I shouldn't say that. There's one winner. <laughs> Four people who are in the finalists, and we'll tell you who the winner is later. But first, we're going to go through each image and talk about their strengths and their weaknesses and kind of as a team, just critique them and have fun talking about how awesome their photos were. Yeah, so it was really hard to, to um, I mean, there was kind of a clear winner from all four of us, but um, yeah. the other three um, were really hard to like figure out because they were really good. Oh, they yeah. They were all really good, so... I hate that whenever I hear that too from other contests. Like it was so many contestants, it was so Thank hard to choose a winner, and they're just like, "Oh, I know, I You're lost." All winners but, in um, our eyes. Yeah, <laughs> but but that was true in this case, though. It really was hard <laughs> to like, you know. <laughs> but but for us, it was true. Hopefully, you'll you'll see. <laughs> you really are all winners. <laughs> you really are all just a bunch of winners. Yeah. All of you are going to get a car someday, eventually, depending on when you need one. You may have to finance it for five years, but you'll get it. <laughs> okay, so. And just believe back to this moment is when you began that journey of getting so, that car. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about this first one, which is green, which I named ben Green Barnett. Trees. Ben Barnett. From awesome Ben Barnett. Picture. Yeah. Green Trees. <laughs> you want to see? Go ahead and start us off. So, uh, yeah, Ben's picture, the green trees. Uh, I liked the the overall composition, uh, the the green trees leading up towards the the main subject of the Milky Way. Um, awesome composition, uh, good use of the dead space around the the stars as well. Um, only thing that I I kind of wish on this one, but not much you can do there, is that the uh, tree on the left was a little more full, like the one on the right. Uh, mm. But yeah, you couldn't uh, do anything about that, I guess. No, huh? yeah. no, love the picture otherwise. <laughs> Rusty? Yeah, yeah, it's a great picture. I just I love this perspective of getting down low and looking up at the the trees and I also like the the darker silhouetted trees in the bottom part of the picture that kind of balance things out. Yeah, it's a really smart composition for a situation he's in. You can see how in the grove it's an open area that he could have gotten captured more Milky Way in that shot, but he decided to go for a balance that I think you had already said it, or you said it in our last try of the recording about the leading lines. You said that yet? Yeah, no, no. Go ahead and say that so I can say my next point. Yeah, so what I like is the leading lines from the from the negative space, which is the black, you know, silhouetted trees pointing up, also leading your mm, eyes up yeah. into that that bridge and that arch that he creates with the two trees. So it's pretty cool. And on that leading line comment, I wanted to add that because he goes into the situation underneath these two trees, seeing how they are so well balanced and symmetrical, well, maybe not in fill of the leaves, but in the needles, but they're filled and symmetrical on how much they're taking up the space in the image. They're pointing towards the Milky Way. And that's a cool shot. That's a cool way of doing it and working with the scene that he has. And my last comment would be that he had some great air glow that night, the green that we're seeing. That's almost Aurora-like back here. That with the green of the trees and then the purple in the Milky Way is all a nice balanced set of colors that really complement with this dark green black that's over here. I mean, this is just a really well either thought out or well happened picture. Well yeah. done, Ben. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say in his in his Facebook post, he did say that he was able to capture the Milky Way and some northern lights. So uh, maybe those are some northern lights. Do you lights. have any idea where Ben is locally, Rusty? You're seeing uh, that on there? In his post, it said he was outside of Boise near the Sawtooth Mountains. Boise is high enough that you could capture some northern lights. Now, wow. because these are faint, it's hard to say whether they are air glow or aurora, but it's very possible. They're very green, like and aurora. And the air glow so, will be yeah. green, so it's hard to say. But, I mean, it's very possible that high up it's to that still latitude. super cool. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Ben. Yeah, nice. it really complements the trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nice shot, Ben. Let's go to the... So this is Tyler Clemenson's picture. You can see how he's at a drill, or is this... This isn't fracking, right? An oil rig. Oil rig. Oil yeah. rig. Mm -hmm. It was really great planning and getting in this situation. And then I don't know what to use for light painting. Do you think it was light pollution? Or do yeah, you think those, he had those, something? those do look like lights that he probably didn't set up because that's covering a large area. I'm guessing it's probably like a building that he's, you know, between. Maybe there's a light on the building or 
there's some it could be light pollution from the city but it's pretty bright yeah it's pretty pretty nice it makes everything seem so gold and yellow to the blue of the sky right again right. another great complementary color set mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i like uh i like the overall composition again on this one um uh, kind of creating a shape there in the center uh a triangle shape between the milky way and the oil rig um i like i always like seeing the core of the milky way and in, in whatever shot i can i can get that in so that's a that's a bonus with this shot for sure so any of you out there who didn't have a core in your milky way shot this judge over here <laughs> you just threw it to the trash pile <laughs> complete garbage no. <laughs> That's not the only thing, but I, I definitely like seeing the core for sure. Yeah, definitely an excellent composition. I like how the Milky Way kind of leads up to that, the oil derrick or whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, just that, that angle. Yeah, it's really cool. And yeah, and- yeah, that probably is. I was going to say that probably is um, light pollution lighting that up. It looks like there's just too much of it that to be light painted. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking too. The only thing that is uncontrollable that I didn't like about the image was that the cloud cover, I just wish there was no cloud cover or if it was like more broken up because just having yeah. that that crazy thick fat band going across the background is just unfortunate because it really is an awesome shot and it's just nothing you can do about that. It's just um, timing kind of yeah. thing, you know, so. It's great that it opened up for the Milky Way, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. It doesn't have any tangents with the lines that you have here. There's right. Nothing There's that, no real interest or anything. It's just a really, just a feathered gray band going across that whole section and kind of killing it for that section. I so. wonder how well these elements would have stood out from the background without it. And so I wonder if it helps or not. We'd have to see a comparison image. To yeah. That. Yeah. The last. Yeah, thing it might have been. It might have been kind of distracting to have a lot of stars behind. All those structures. I'm not sure though. Might have, might have been. The last thing I wanted to say about it was that his image I chose from the others because of his balance composition. Mm-hmm. He has an element here on the left that's reaching all the way up into all thirds. It is, it's breaking the plane from the horizon. It's going up. It has very interesting. It's very interesting in the image and it pulls your eyes right up there, and then your eyes just kind of naturally swirl over to the Milky Way, and you mm-hmm. just kind of go back and forth in this spiral motion of viewing what's happening on this image. And that if only it was sharper and it had a focus fix, the noise was fixed. He maybe stacked the image and maybe even fought the gold color and amplified it somewhere else i don't know what else he could do but if just the quality was a little bit up on sharpness and contra and uh clarity i think this would have been just a hard image to say no to yeah i agree i agree completely on that yeah excellent image and in his facebook post he says that he just got his camera and tripod so this is this is a very early shot in his photography journey. So, are you kidding? Just this super, is like one of his first five yeah, pictures ever. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, fantastic. Yeah. Great shot. Awesome, awesome. Tyler. You're wi- you have won the contest to be in the final four with an image that you're practicing with. Basically, if you have this kind of natural talent and eye for it, as soon as you get the quality and clarity there, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. So just some technical hurdles, man, and you're off to a writing star already. So. Oh yeah, that's so cool. All right, let's do the next one. Okay, here is Zach Sheehan. I love this image. It's practically a black and white image. It's almost a monotone yeah. blue image, monochromatic. Blue. Yeah, it's very monochromatic, yeah. But there's some cool, eerie quality to it that just like kind of draws you in. Like, you know, if you're a fan of Stranger Things, then you're going to like love this image. You know, it just has that kind of like that quality to it that just gives you that cool and maybe it's the colors and the the leading lines but everything is just it's just it's just a great shot i really like it oh yeah yeah i like uh again the leading lines uh i like how the tracks are pretty much the only thing that uh, is super visible in the foreground uh leading you right towards the milky way and almost creating an hourglass shape with the mm, yeah. with the milky way coming up uh there's that little glowing light that's that's at the top of the tracks. It would have been kind of cool if it was right in the middle of the tracks. I, I don't know what that light is. Yeah, I don't but, know if it's a car headlights or another car came by, but if that could have been planned in the dead center of the tracks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A, a little ghost walking down the, the tracks with a lantern or something. Oh, creepy. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I like I like the image overall. Yeah, I agree totally. I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for railroad tracks, and I just like how they these the way this image is composed. Those tracks just kind of go off into infinity, and then that picks up right there with the Milky Way, and then it goes up. It just kind of leads your eye through the entire image. Yeah, it's very well balanced uh, where the tracks come out and where the the Milky Way comes in. I don't know if Zach is aware of it, but that's something that was a bad practice when you put a diagonal line right into the corner of your image. But he avoided that, or he cropped it away from that, or he was just aware on his own that it looks bad. If the diagonal line goes straight into a corner, it has tension in the image, and you don't want that tension. So you bring a little breathing room out of the corner, and it still has the same thing you're looking for where it pulls the eye right in, a completely vertical Milky Way. You guys got to understand the timing of a completely vertical Milky Way like this was either complete luck on Zach's timing of being here, or he knew I needed to be here during this half an hour. Literally only 30 minutes to an hour that the Milky Way stays in that vertical position before it starts tilting, or it's not there yet. And so to get this so nice and vertical and have it match well with the tracks, I mean, that took some planning, some composition. The trees that are on the right that are a little bit taller than the trees on the left, if those were just symmetrical, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting as it is with having more tree on the far right than it is having, you know, symmetrical balance on each side. It's just, it's really well done. I named this Purple Tracks. Purple Tracks. Oh, yeah, you haven't named the other one. What did you name Tyler's? That one is uh, Yellow Oil Rig. So we've got green trees, yellow oil rig, and purple track. Yeah. I just don't know where you come up with these names. This is really so creative. I know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the creative side of me that just thrives. You know, it's just. Yeah. It's going to take a lot of people to. It's not... very organic and it's very. Um, yeah. What's you your know, method abstract for coming when, up with this? You know, yeah. It's a very abstract <laughs> way of thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Rusty, I love your comments you've been adding in from the YouTube stuff or the Facebook stuff. What do you got for this guy? This says it was taken 15 minutes from his house, which is Jeez. that's pretty awesome. He Only hit 15 minutes away, and this is in Ohio. There's not a lot of light pollution in his house. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what part of Ohio Wooster is in, but it says Wooster, Ohio. And it's taken just out of town into the swamps. So. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Man, 15 minutes from home. He cut the contest in half. He's like, 30 minutes? How about 15, suckas? Nice. <laughs> I Get like extra Z credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> I like Zach a lot. I've been following his images for a while, and this this is my favorite astrophotography image. Yeah, good his. work, Zach. It's awesome. So good. All right. This one is from Adam Hoggett, or Hogat, or I think he pronounced it Hoggett. <laughs> no, I think it's Hoggett. <laughs> so Adam Hoggett has a picture. Is this the only one without a Milky Way? Uh, mm, it is, right? Is, yeah, is yeah actually. It yeah. is. Yeah. You can see where our biases lie, but uh, it's not as bad as you think. So <laughs> who wants to start with Adam's image? Let's let Daniel I'll start. Oh, Rusty hasn't Rusty started start, yet. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Rusty. So this is just the thing that really drew my eye to this image is all the colors just amazing color and I love the way they reflect in the in the water down below and I'm not sure what the settings are on this shot but the water is obviously obviously it's a longer longer exposure so the water is kind of smoothed out but there's still a little bit of texture in it which I I like I don't I think it I don't think it would have had the same effect if it would have just been totally silky smooth mm. but I kind of like having a little bit of extra a little bit of texture still in the water yeah, man, I totally agree with that. Agreed. I think uh, just looking at it, probably settings are are in the neighborhood of uh, like a f11, f16, just because we got the little starbursts on the right on the lights. Um, low ISO because we don't have a, a much grain in the image at all. But it's a it's a great image. A lot of color, a lot of great textures. Um, it's a cool shot. There's yeah, I mean, I mean, to throw out the obvious again, there's nothing really happening in the sky. And because of that, he composed it in a way that it wasn't distracting. So he didn't put too much sky in there because there's really yeah. nothing going on there. And it just looks like it's maybe um, close to an hour after sunset. So he's still in like a blue-ish hour. Yeah, he's got blue hour, definitely. And uh, so because there was nothing, no clouds, and it wasn't dark enough for, for any stars or anything, but... 
man, he just really, so he just cut that out and just emphasized right up on those leading lines, which is that awesome foamy water from the beach coming up and just that color just spilling over and the water is just amplifying it. I mean, you can see the color from the wheel and from the other lights, but man, that water is just amplifying it like big time. So oh, it just yeah. really just draws you right in. It's really fantastic. Yeah, who doesn't look at this image and go straight to this mm-hmm. part right here and then go straight up from there to the wheel and then following that wheel, you kind of ride the roller mm-hmm. coaster to the rest of the image. And, you know, seeing the starburst, the starburst brings attention to a part of the image that wouldn't have had anything else going for it. Right. And while there are some lights over here and lack of starburst, don't pull us over there, it's, it doesn't compete with the image. These are obviously closer. These ones over here, the waves. I just, I love how even in the waves, you see the colors from this. Yeah. It's just, you, you can't. If you can't have a Milky Way and you can't get a shot like that and you're out for night photography, how lucky can you get that there's an awesome fair going on right here? Well, what's also cool is the timing of this because the wheel isn't moving. Yeah, I was going to say that. And isn't so, it I mean, it would have been kind of cool if the wheel was moving, but because it wasn't, you get those really strong um, colors in the uh, in the water. Oh, yeah, it really isn't moving. I thought no. this was some motion lines here. No, because it has to be this buckets, is at least a 20-second exposure. And so those wheels, I mean, if it was moving, you would see it. The, la- the last thing about timing I'll say about Adam's image is that he recognized that when he catches the waves coming in, he has all of that turf, all of that moving movement on the waves kind of blocking the colors. The, the, the moment of glory was when the waves pulled away mm-hmm. and so he waited for that moment for his exposure and he kept all the distracting sea foam out of the image so that it's just that reflecting colors and it's just beautiful shot i don't know if he said he handheld this i don't think he did i think he had a tripod in the ground because it's such a long exposure yeah, right yeah that's me yeah but uh, this is well done it just it's clean. It has all the elements we've talked about. The tangents are so so much potential for tangents here as you have the mountain line behind. Mm-hmm. There's only one area where I don't know if it's solar panels or what. There's a little tangent connection there. But, you know, the, the roller coaster goes up over the mountains and come back in. The wheel goes up and over the horizon. You've got all of this stuff not competing. And for an image where the top third is where all the action is at, it doesn't yeah. feel imbalanced because of because all the so color. so much, yeah, yeah. color and yeah, going on down below. Yeah. And you get the shapes of the waves, you know, creating these awesome peak like features. And then you get the smooth, yeah. you know, waves. I mean, there's just so much to look at down below. Also, it's just, it's great. You're looking all over the place in that thing. It's just, there's just detail everywhere. Oh, man. Please tell me that we're only three months away from getting out to a beach coast, the coast somewhere. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, we need more <laughs> photography out there. Right, right. <laughs> Any other comments from you guys? Anything from Facebook? So, this may may say why he didn't get the Milky Way shot. Um, Adam is from LA. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he could get 30 miles away or 30 minutes away from home and, and uh, find some dark skies. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he cer- certainly made the best of it. Absolutely. Anything else you want to add? No, no, I like the like the shot for sure. So you might think that we bricked Adam's chances for winning because he doesn't have a Milky Way in there. He lives in L.A. in an area you can't get a good Milky Way shot. But you know what? All of us voted for Adam's image. And since it was a four-man vote, unison, completely uh, consensus all around, his was the winner. So congrats to Adam Haggett. Hoggett. 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 <laughs> I'm sure it's just Hoggett. Sorry, Adam. Yeah. Your last name has two G's, two T's, and it makes me want to go all Dutch on it. Hoggett. <laughs> Is it goed, huh? Heel goed, Hoggett. All right. Sounds like I'm cussing, Adam. Hoggett. Yeah. You stupid Hoggett. No, we do like you, Adam. So. <laughs> so, well done, man. We're going to send job, you a copy of the Royce Bear Code as soon as we post this video. So, you'll be getting that in a private message from us. Don't tell anyone. Let them have a chance to watch the video and see, hey, was it Ben? Was it Zach? Was it Tyler? Ben, Zach, and Tyler, awesome images. You For guys... Sure. You guys were faced with other images that were just right at the same area of skill and quality that you guys did an awesome job with what you did, whether it was by composition, whether it was by planning, whether it was by a brilliant idea of where to be and how to get a good shot. You cut the, you just cut ahead of everyone just enough to be in this final four. So well freaking done. Mm-hmm. Nice. There are a lot of awesome shots. And yeah, so, absolutely. 
Thanks, guys, for doing the judging. Anything else you guys want to say before we go? No, congrats. Yeah. Yeah, keep it up. Keep Thanks it for joining yeah, us good on work, the Photog Adventure Photo Contest this month. Next month, we're going to be doing a photo contest that has everyone in submitting their images and having everyone else vote for them. So it won't just be a four-man bias judge panel. It's going to be everyone voting. So let's see who wins on that one. And it'll include daylight photography, not just night photography. So thanks, guys, for following. Thanks for watching. See you guys. See ya. See ya.